Hey, it's Clyde Lewis at the Comic Con with one of my favorite people in the entire world, Bob Camp, who's the artist for the Red and Stimpy Show. 25 years of Red and Stimpy, and so glad to have have him here with us. You know, Bob, I don't know if I, I was telling uh, your wife, I said, you know, uh, Ren and Stimpy saved my life. I was going through some very hard times, and I just sat and watched Ren and Stimpy, and I was so, so happy to see it. What are some of the good memories you have of the Ren and Stimpy Show when you were working on it? Uh, there's a lot of good memories. Just having a having a laugh with a bunch of funny silly guys coming up with jokes you know coming up with gags and writing and drawing the stuff and always trying to one-up one another and do who, see who can do the funnier cartoon uh, lots of pranks uh, it was just a silly time you know a, a studio full of really funny a-holes you know yeah was there ever a I guess a Ren and Stimpy where we know it was always over the top was there one particular one in mind that you go that was just so over the top we can't believe we got away with it uh, rubber nipple salesman. It's it's just beginning to end bizarre, uh, disturbing, and and the most well known scene in it is an homage to Jeffrey Dahmer. Is that what he says? Call the police. Call the police. The walrus, the rubber, rubber walrus protector, and Mr. Horse. Clearly, the the creepiest thing that uh, Nickelodeon ever did. For the longest time, we actually wondered where Call the Police came from, because that was really creepy. And of yeah. course, we, the Night of the Living Dead music was just perfect for it and everything else. It was just a great piece. Uh, Space Madness is always a favorite of mine. And uh, how did that come about? What was the inspiration for Space Madness? You know, uh, we wanted to do a space show, and John wanted, really wanted to do a space show. And uh, we had a hard time writing it, and we struggled with it. Jim Gomez finally wrote it, and uh, it was just, you know, Everybody loves Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, so we want to do a space show. You know. Did you have any involvement with the um, the remake of Yogi Bear at all? I remember watching that. You have anything to do with that? No, that was all John Kay. Um, I had nothing to do with that or the adult party cartoons that came later. That wasn't. It. So, um, what was uh, what was the? Was there any one that was the most controversial with Nick, with uh, uh, Nick that uh, you really got a lot of heat for? Yeah, um, Man's Best Friend was the uh, um, the final John K. cartoon. Uh, is the the cartoon that got him fired? Actually, uh, uh, it has George Licker American his character in it, and, he, and it's all about him teaching Ren and discipline. Uh, and Nickelodeon just couldn't handle it, and they they didn't approve of it, and they made, asked him to change it, and he refused to change it. And it caused a big problem. There were other issues too, but uh, that was the one. How did Gary Owens get get uh, chosen to be Powder Toastman? Because he's definitely a, a natural for that. Uh, because he's Gary Owens. I mean, we, we had another guy whose name escapes me, uh, Darren, I can't remember his last name. He did the first Powder Toast Man, and we were a little less than happy with it. We thought, no, we got to get Gary Owens. Uh, you know, we all remembered Roger Ramjet, you know, and it's like, wow, we got to get Gary Owens. So we asked him. Gary was the best guy in the world to work with. He was a gentleman. He was a professional. He was always funny. Uh, one time I, I pointed a video camera at him and I said, uh, Gary, uh, tell me about Bob Camp. And he says, uh, well, one day, Bob Camp went over to Sherry Lewis's house and he took off his left sock and threw it in the street and yelled, Lamb Chop's been shot. And I just, I pissed my pants. He's, he's a really, really funny guy. I was real sad to uh, hear that he died. It was very sad to hear that too, because he was just a, a giant in the radio business, a giant for uh, animation. Uh, one more thing, my favorite thing is Log. How many, um, how many different episodes are Log that we didn't see? Uh, I know we had Civil War Log. We had all kinds of different Logs. What Log didn't fly? Hey, log, log, it's funny. Log was our backup thing. It was, it was always filler. I, I, it's always amazing to me that people love Log so much because the original thing was we had a minute to fill. We, you know, we weren't real good at making cartoons the right length, you know, there at the beginning. So John says, do something about log. So I went, okay. Uh, so I ripped off the Slinky commercial song, and I ripped off the kid from the Mapo cereal commercials, Marky Mapo, and the rest is history. And uh, the, the, the later versions of log were like, if, if there was a hole to fill, okay, we'll do another log, and we'd knock them out, you know. And we always had the song, which was good filler put that in there and you get, you know, another 30 seconds of uh, footage out of it.
Well, it's better than bad. It's good. Yeah. And, and so is this. Bob Camp, thank you for being on the program with us today. I really appreciate this. 25 years of Ren and Stimpy. And uh, it's amazing. Bob Camp with us. Something, what's that? It's on Hulu now, and it's also on Splat, which is Teen Nick at Night. Okay, so Splat and Hulu, Teen Nick at Night. Ren and Stimpy, 25 year anniversary. You gotta catch it. If you've never heard of Ren and Stimpy, it'll be a treat for you to watch it. Even binge watch, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. We're here with Zakus. He's a bounty hunter from Star Wars, of course. Hi, Zakus. Tell me, uh, what is your favorite thing about Star Wars? The bounty hunters. The bounty hunters, of course. And you hunt bounties. Uh, who do you capture when you hunt? Uh, anything that, anything that gives me money. Money, of course. That's an international kind of system of exchange, isn't it? Well, I can see that we're not going to get much out of you, so a uh, pleasure meeting you. May the force be with Hi, you. what's your name? I'm Elise Hungerford. Elise, what character are you? Generic Ginger Jedi. Ginger Jedi, <laughs> very good. And who is your little friend here? This is MS-59, or Mess for short. MS-59. Hello, Mess. Is that all you say, Mess? Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, what kind of reaction are you getting here? Uh, it's mostly just fun. Uh, kids are really fascinated by it. And sometimes I'll let them drive it around. Tell me how this works. It's a remote control car that I tore the top off of and stuck the box on, and now I can drive it around. So much fun, thank you. Yes, thank you. Eric Sloan with Jake. Hi, Jake. Hi, how you doing? Well, I'm good. What do you do here? Well, I'm a uh, self-published cartoonist. I make a comic called Modest Medusa, which is this one right here. Medusa, who comes from a magical world and comes to our world to learn to play Pokemon and eat junk food, and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, Pokemon. Now, are, is this a derivative then of the Japanese art form? Uh, I am definitely influenced by um, Japanese comics and anime, uh, but also it's uh, very much influenced by classic American stuff as well. Um, there's a comic called Hereville by a local artist, Barry Deutsch, which was a big influence. Great, and I notice it's very colorful. Uh, what is your color palette? What are the, I see beige and uh, all kinds of uh, kind of modest colors. Oh, thank you, modest colors. I, uh, I prefer cool colors uh, punctuated by warmer colors. So I always try, I always start with cool colors and then find one or two warm colors to bring them out. Who are the heroes of your series? Uh, Modest is a five-year-old Medusa, as I said before, and she's the main character. And she's all about uh, finding new things, trying new things. Uh, the guy who finds her living in his toilet, actually, uh, is named Jake as well. And uh, he rescues her from that and uh, takes her in. Pardon me, living in his what? In his toilet. Um, when the series starts, Modest swims right up a pipe from her, from her magical world into a toilet in our world. <laughs> and she loves it because she doesn't know what a toilet is. For her, it's just this perfect little personal swimming pool made just for her. A portal? A magical portal. Um, a, a gateway between her kind of fantasy Dungeons and Dragons style world and our world. A portal potty. Exactly. <laughs> uh, almost a portable portal potty. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, thank you. That was a good setup.